One is a top chef and restaurateur, the other is an acclaimed artist. Both are well-known Mississippians who have combined their talents to author books, make special statewide appearances, and host an Italian road trip, and now star in their own television series. Palette to Palette airs here on MPB. Its hosts, Robert St. John and Wyatt Waters, are here with us today on Conversations. Guys, I got to tell you this. I usually do hours of research before I talk to a guest. I didn't do any for this show. Well, Because we've known each other forever. You make us feel so yeah. good, Marshall. Thank yeah, you for that. Good. We appreciate wow. that. Wow, gosh, my heart beats faster now. That's great. Welcome and congratulations, by the way. TV Thanks. stars. Well, um, <laughs> we're, and a, with a face made for radio. I understand so. that. Trust yeah. me. So <laughs> It's a miracle for all three of us, I guess. No, not for Wyatt. Wyatt's a good looking oh, yeah. guy. Wyatt's the man. He really he is. You know, he is. He is. You know I got to play you for one year when I helped Robert with the book, and so I can sign oh. your signature better than you can now. We have had similar paths. I know. You I was, know. I was hoping some of your talent would rub off on me. I was hoping the same thing with you. Okay, television show, and I I love the way that you have set this up because I've always told people that Mississippi's at least five different states, mm -hmm. and exactly that's what you're doing. You're going all around the state and showing it off. You know, it's it's something that we actually, about 15 years ago, for, we did a pilot 15 years ago, and now we're finally airing here in, in 2017. Was it yeah. color? Yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> it was not a talkie yet. Yeah. But, uh, okay. I mean, you know, there were subtitles down there. But no, seriously, we, we, we uh, made it a stab at a TV show. And the Turner South Network was ready to go with it. That's right. So when you did the My South column. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and Wyatt and I went over to Atlanta. We went into the Turner building. We pitched the show. They were ready to go with it. And then Fox Sports bought uh, Turner South. And uh, we got <laughs> we got mothballed until now. And yeah. we're we're back. You're and, back. And we're we're really fired up about it, don't you think? Oh, man? It's, I've had a great time doing this. That's the thing. Yeah, You're yeah. not going to find two bigger cheerleaders for the state of Mississippi right. than us. And, and so for us to be able to travel around, uh, Wyatt painting, me eating, um, yeah. we're having a blast. I, mean, I got to say this because one of the things when you travel around with Robert St. John and Wyatt's the only person I know that is immune to it, yeah. I gained 35 pounds on a book tour with you <laughs> because you know where every good restaurant is in the state. Well, that's my you, job. You know, yeah, it's a yeah. tough job, but somebody's got to chew it. So. <sighs> You, mm. <laughs> thank yeah. you. Sorry, we don't have a That's band. A we we a had good. a band, but Rim we budget cuts. You know, we lost the band. But y'all have been best, really good friends longer than a lot of people have been married, and I think it's been more successful. Because <laughs> uh, I remember, I, I remember when Southern Palette came out. That was kind of when it yeah. all started, wasn't it? Back in the late nineties. It was. 90s. You want to do that yeah. one, or you want me to go for well, it? Well, I'll start it. You can join in too. Well, that started. Yeah, was it 18 years ago? Something like yeah, that. Yeah, 19? Yeah, we were kids. And, yeah. uh, and Robert and Jill came to the gallery in Clinton, my gallery, and you had this idea for using stories, food, and paintings to describe Southern culture. Yeah. You can take over from there. Well, the four, you always talk about the four Fs or whatever yeah. about the South. It's five Fs. Faith, five. family, friends, food, and fun. Okay, I left the fun off. Sorry. And that's I think that's we where the success the comes from. Yeah. And, and you know, you don't have to fun. look for fun. If you got the other four, the fifth happens. But, right. You know, I had, uh, you know, the restaurant business in Hattiesburg and it just started writing this column, this syndicated column, and, and was just too busy. And there was a customer of ours, Frances Carnes, who ran the Gifted Studies program at USM. She kept saying, Robert, you need to do a cookbook. You need to do a cookbook. And I would say, I don't have time. don't want to do it. This went on for months. And finally, one day, she was sitting in the Purple Parrot, table three, called me over. There was a gentleman with her. She said, Robert, sit down. This is so-and-so. He's with this publishing company. Tell him about your cookbook. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't have a cookbook, but I. You so think I'm well on your feet. I'm, I'm, that's yeah, what right. I tried to think on my feet, and I said, "Well, if I were to do a cookbook, I would have recipes I developed here at the restaurant over the years. I would have stories about the South and growing up in the South and food in the South, uh, like I've done in the newspaper column." And I said, "I'd have watercolors by Wild Waters." Without missing a beat, this guy says, "Oh, well, if you get Wild Waters, you got a book deal." The uh, the problem okay. is, I didn't know Wild Waters, <laughs> right. and so. We went up, like Wyatt said, you know, went up to the gallery the next day. I said, hey, man, I got an idea. And uh, it just kind of went from there, and that book came out, and it became this thing. We, we, uh, we sold out the first printing in like three weeks. Yeah, I know. And, and literally, you got hung up by a slow boat from China. It was, it was so late. Almost. It was crazy. 
the book, yeah, there was a dock strike dock in strike, San Diego right. is what yeah, it was. And we had all these book signings scheduled and everything. The book arrived the day of the first signing, like four hours. And so <laughs> for that three weeks, we were, I can remember Wyatt at Mistletoe Marketplace. <laughs> I can't do that today. Running, oh, yeah. The books that are heavy, you know, he had like four cases of books and he's <laughs> running through them. We're just, all we could do just to keep it going. So, but we had a blast yeah. and we got to know each other. We started out as, as total strangers, uh, moved into kind of this business uh, relationship and became best friends. And uh, it's Which just- Which is really the fuel behind it. I mean, we get along and- yeah. It's not we, so work. It's not we, so much work. This know? is our fourth book. We just right. finished, and we've never had as much as a crossword in mm. uh, 18 years. I've been in business a long time, and that's a rare thing. Not having a crossword with yeah. somebody that you're working I with. I mean, not even yeah. really seriously. I've been, I've been, you know, never. No, no. But has that's he awesome. ever been mad? That's the question. I don't We're know. competitive never with mad. our Beatle yeah. knowledge of Beatle trivia. Yeah, that's true. That's you as know, close he, as we get you to You both love music. Rock, yeah. I mean, no yeah. doubt. He knows music more. is a big thing. He's oh, being kind. He knows more Beatles stuff I've, than I do. I'm yeah. older, but you've caught up. He's way older. Mm, he's probably past, a better past. singer, too, isn't he? He's, he's a better singer. He's older. He's way more talented. But it helps to have the music. We have a lot of stuff in common. We have a good time together. One of the things I always love when you do the cooking demonstrations and you're painting along with it, because one thing about your painting, and I've always been just admired you for this, that you can do a painting so quickly and it looks nice. I can do a drawing very quickly and it doesn't look nice. Well, and so, but no, I mean, I'm not being mean stuff. to myself. You're, you're, you're pretty better. amazing. But I mean, I, I love working within limits and, you know, I, I, I really like working with people. I've always liked working with people who know something I don't know. And no one knows more about food than you, Robert. You're, every, the world is about how food works, how it affects the culture, how, you know, their personal associations, and it's, it's a cool thing to, to see that and have knowledge of that. I think it's a very complimentary relationship, what it is, and what you're talking about, those dual demos. Yeah. We've done probably over 150 of these things, and we've done them for, for, his, for, for groups. As we did it in the lingerie department of a profits department store in Knoxville, Tennessee, and back then I was cooking with uh, uh, butane. I dreamed and almost about caught stuff a, like that as a almost kid. caught a rack of panties on fire in the lingerie <laughs> department in Knoxville, Tennessee. But we've done it in New York. You know, Wyatt, well, I was telling this story earlier. It was, it was, not, it was not too long after 9 11, and we were doing this dual demo in, in New York. And so it's where I cook a four course meal out of the book, and Wyatt does a watercolor demo. He wanted to, he does great watermelons. A lot of the still life have watermelon, they very southern. A good representative actually on the cover of the new book. Well, watermelons Wyatt are somehow symbol. carried on a watermelon and checked it through in his carry on luggage and took it to New York because there, there are only about 200 fresh markets in Manhattan. Right. But Each, which we, has probably countless varieties that's of right. watermelons. But you had to have Mississippi yeah. watermelon, so. Because so people we, can tell. You know, they'll know, hey, wait, that's not Smith County. Well, Smith County. That's what exactly. I have Smith County, yeah. Oh, there's a difference. Trust me so. on that one. Okay, let's just break it up here for a second, half and a half. How did you learn to love cooking? Because obviously, and you and I have a lot in common mm -hmm. because we both had moms that were very similar. We right. both were just janitors. But talk about your early childhood and how you learned to, to love cooking. You know, you it, at six years old, I asked for and received an Easy Bake Oven for Christmas. Uh, in 1967, Hattiesburg, Mississippi. That's with the light bulb. A guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. I cooked with a 100 white light bulb. First thing I ever cooked with was a 100 white light bulb, and I cooked cakes and pizzas. And my brother would make fun of me because, you know, men didn't cook back then. <laughs> Certainly boys didn't cook. But, you know, he also made fun of me with his mouth full of that cake. So he ate the stuff. And I just, it was just one of those things that, um, always connected with me and uh, you know my grandmother would cook she was a great cook she had a great house she was a, a great hostess and i would just prop up on a stool and watch her cook and I, my, my fondest memories childhood memories all originate in that house most of them on that stool with her and so i've just got this love of uh, food from an early age and it's because the food was so good and and it was just all through our culture, it's a little different today. Yeah. You know, all the way into, you know, the schools had food, you know, today with cakewalks, you know. You remember cakewalks cake at the walk, Halloween yeah. carnival? Definitely. The Halloween, back when I was a kid, mm -hmm. you went to the cakewalk and it was like musical chairs, you know. Yeah. They set up the musical chairs and there were 12 people in 11 chairs and they'd play a song, you know. You'd be, and dude, I'm gonna tell you, I played full contact cakewalk, man. I was, because <laughs> I would knock people, it got down to two people in one chair. Yeah. 
but because the ladies in my neighborhood made these awesome cakes. And I'll tell you what the cakewalk lo looks like today at the fall festival oh. in, in your local school, is they put numbers on the floor and you walk around and uh, you know they call somebody's number and, and you got the cake under the plastic that came from the grocery store, you know, and it's just, it's a different, different day in town. So my love came from, you know, just home cooking. Yeah. And the stories that were told around the food, too. There's always stories being yeah. told. Food is that thing that brings us together. It's a very biblical thing. Yeah. You think about Last Supper and loaves and fishes. All this, all this thing, it's, it's the thing that brings us together. And I always say that you think about the best times in your life and right. your best memories and the best things that happen. Mm -hmm. And more times than not, food was somehow in part of that equation. You know, it just brings us together. And oh, you go to, I mean, if you go, have to experience a funeral, yeah. You got the funeral food. Yeah. Uh, Mac McAnally sings about funeral food mm -hmm. really well, really quite yeah. well. Wyatt, you, your dad was a football coach. Yes, he was. Dad yeah. was a coach, and uh, my mom was a coach's wife. And yeah. And somehow, how did you end up becoming an artist? I mean, I've always. Well, I was really, really bored. My my father was moved to a, a school in Florence, and they threw in a house to live in. It's kind of sweeten sweeten the deal. Yeah. And we get there, and I'm sure my mother was not brought into this decision. We get there, and the floor is just, it's not, it's not a very attractive floor. There are holes in the floor. And I remember her crying. I was two and a half years old. And she patched the floor. And, um, and then we went to the Western Auto, got some paint. And she let me spatter paint the floor with her because linoleum was big then. So Very this big. was mm -hmm. faux linoleum. Really. Not and even I, real linoleum. No, 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 no. Yeah. Not real. Not, not the fancy like real stuff. linoleum. <laughs> no. But uh, so after that, I was just drawing on everything. And uh, kindergarten teacher Rose Taylor in Florence, Mississippi, uh, would teach us to read using painting. She'd read the stories and we would paint. When real school, that means first grade, started, uh, my mom went over there and asked her to begin teaching classes. And she taught well into her 90s and she taught me uh, first years of school and uh, got me a good start, a really good education. Which artist influenced your style the most? Oh, golly. <laughs> You need um, to say Jackson Pollock because the, well, the Jackson, that's, that's, that's that's Jackson yeah. Pollock painted certainly. Everybody has, uh, but I, I will say John Singer Sargent's watercolors oh, yeah. are definitely. In fact, that's that was probably the lead into what we did for me for the Italian cookbook we did. Mm -hmm. uh, he just did the best. He was known for his uh, portraits, but he just did the best watercolors. He really did. You know, really powerful. Fantastic. Sam Gore too. Oh, Dr. Gore, yeah. Dr. Gore. Uh, when I, I didn't have any art in high school because I'd moved from Florence to Clinton and I figured, well, you know, this is a big city kind of school and I didn't want anybody to know that I painted. So I didn't um, take any classes. I still see people who think I was in art classes and they'll be real nice saying, we knew we were gonna paint, but nobody knew I was gonna paint. But uh, I regained that when I went to school at Mississippi College and uh, Dr. Gore got a hold of me my sophomore year and gave me some responsibility and made me feel like I could do this. Okay. and. Uh, he was, he's definitely been, I wouldn't be painting without Dr. Gore. You both are very talented at what you do, but you're also very good entrepreneurs. I mean, you broke away, you have your own gallery. Not a lot of artists have their own gallery. Of course, what you've done with your restaurants. and I, I, But I think one of the things I really think is amazing about both of you, and of course this is a lot of, specifically with you, Robert, when you hit created Extra Table, mm -hmm. I felt like that's when you all kind of hit an extra, you know, kind of went to the next level. Huh. Well. Uh, extra table uh, is, is uh, you know, and and others may know. It's really it was, it was just this thing that happened organically. It was just sitting right there. Well, you know? I got a call one day from uh, from the local uh, mission pantry in Hattiesburg, and they were out. Of, they were feeding about 700 families a month at the time, and uh, they had completely run out of food, and they were having all their clients come in that weekend, their Friday actually, and they called in a panic. Said, yeah. "We're out of food. We're out of food. What can we do? Can you help?" And I said. Well, yeah, and I figured the quickest, best, easiest way for me to help would just be call my Cisco rep, the food service uh, you know, distributor, put together an order and have them drop ship it to the agency, which we did. And uh, you know, they had food, and I started thinking, well, maybe, you know, maybe if there was an easier way for this to happen, uh, people would give more often, and we wouldn't have kids. You know, it was Mississippi's number one in food insecurity, and right. so. I traveled around, started visiting places like Stewpot here in Jackson and other places. And to be honest with you, I was a little skeptical at first. I'm like, you know, this is America. This is not some third world country. You know, we really don't have hunger. 
and it's, uh, my eyes were opened quickly. There's a huge hunger problem. You've got about 670,000 Mississippians who suffer from what the government calls food insecurity. Right. More than 200,000 are kids who have a school breakfast and a school lunch and don't eat again until the next right. day. I mean, it's a real thing. And it's hard to learn when you're hungry. Yeah. Here's the problem. Yeah. There, we're number one in food insecurity, but we're also number one in obesity. And I had a problem where I thought, well, somebody's eating something somewhere. And, and I, what I learned quickly is that if you don't have enough money to purchase food, you're basically living out of a convenience store and you're, you know, drinking the the worst drinks that are the cheapest and eating the worst food that is the cheapest. And and a lot of these places uh, live on food drives, the mission pantries and soup kitchens. And so the food is not healthy. It's what people are throwing away. So extra table, we kind of planted our flag on two things. Number one, we want 100% of the money we raise to go to purchase food. Right. We purchase wholesale in bulk, and so it goes a long way. But number two, it's going to be healthy food. So it's low-fat proteins, low-sugar fruits, healthy grains, low-sodium vegetables. And we're statewide now. We run a statewide charity mm -hmm. uh, with two people in a in a barred section of my office. They're, they were shipping tons of food every month. It's been a... It's been a good thing. So, and of course, Mac McAnally has helped you out and been. Man, Mac is awesome. We we, we I had this idea. I was actually up here doing a thing for uh, Dan Mullen, his foundation. I was emceeing and cooking, and and Mac was the entertainment. And afterwards, we we're backstage, and Mac said, "You know anything I can ever do to help extra?" And table? he meant it when he said that. Yeah, well, here's Mac. the thing. I learned to. I got to about McGee, and I, you know how what a huge Mac fan. We're all three. Oh, yeah. The mutual Mac Appreciation Society here, but. I got to about McGee heading home that night, and I, I called him back. I said, are you serious about that? I, he said, yeah. I said, I've got an idea. You know, I love his music. And I, I'm a huge fan of Jay Dean and the, and the USM Symphony. It's the state's oldest symphony orchestra in Hattiesburg. It's one of the best-kept secrets around. So it's great. I said, have you ever done a symphony? I'd love to hear your music put to symphonic music. And he said, oh, I'd love to do that. He said, can I bring the Coral Reefer band? And I went, uh, yeah, the answer yeah, to that question is okay. always yes. <laughs> sure. Your only stuff. So we started doing these concerts yeah. and uh, it's kind of a launch into a community yeah. uh, to let them know what Extra Table is about. And now Max has got a CD coming out and half the money's going to Extra Table and some Buffett's labels. Just really cool. I, cool I have to tell this because when we were doing the book tour, you gave me a bootleg of him singing down mm -hmm. in Harbor Docks and Destin, yeah. which mm -hmm. is one of my oh, all-time cool. favorite yeah, yeah. CDs. I, I love I've that. I've told him before, if my house burned, I would get the dog, a couple of pictures of the kids, and that That's, CD. Yeah. It was the only copy. Now it's in my hard drive. Yeah, I've, I've got it actually in a safe deposit box. <laughs> I want to make sure it's safe. Okay, let's, let's just go ahead and jump to the television show because the, what I've seen so far, I've seen, of course, the teaser reels, and, and y'all are having a blast with that. Mm -hmm. We really are. It's fun. I don't know. Wait, where it's have you gone? Uh, Talk about, about who you've do. met, what you've done. Go I mean, for it. Well, we've been to Greenwood. We've been, of course, in the Jackson area, up a, uh, Oxford, down on the coast. Uh, Hattiesburg, I'm, I'm leaving one out. Stark. 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 Excuse me. <laughs> you don't so even know, know, know where I've been. It's <laughs> a pretty good shotgun pattern in Mississippi. Yeah. You know, you have to, uh, the tough thing is trying to figure out what to put in and leave out because there's everything, there's so much good stuff here. You can make a whole lot more shows than what we're doing. It started out as kind of a, a way to document our process working on a book. On the book, yeah. The Mississippi Palette is the book. It's our fourth book. And there was some interest in that, and uh, we're working with a guy named Anthony Thaxton, uh, who who mm -hmm. actually is a former student of Wyatt he's, he's years really good ago, as well. Yeah, a good friend of mine, and we've done joint projects together, and uh, so we've been just traveling around the state with Anthony, having a blast. So it started out as this maybe a documentary on how the book process right. goes, and it, it somehow morphed into you know why not lead these tours to Italy, and we. We've got some great friends in Italy. We did a book over there. And and somewhere, you know, the, we, we talk to them about coming to Mississippi. We talk about how much we love Mississippi. We want them to be here. And and the book morphed into this, and the TV show really has morphed into mm -hmm. this, is what if our friends in Italy who have never been to Mississippi, we want them to see Mississippi. We want them to know Mississippi, to, to see why it's beautiful paintings, yeah. to know what it tastes like, to know what it sounds like and all that. And, and that's what the book became and that's what this show has become. For someone who has never been to Mississippi, we want them to, you know, 
to know the real deal. Right, not what you would see on, on a movie or... Mm, the know. stereotypical exactly. falsehoods you see a lot of times. Exactly, and of course you're visiting different restaurants and... Mm -hmm. Oh gosh. Mm. We're having fun. Yeah. We're having fun. The trip to Italy, and, and I have to say, it, I remember when y'all took the first. You were going through a rough patch in your life, and mm -hmm. uh, the details don't matter necessarily. No, but, but they you definitely were, fueled. But you were the work. That yeah. trip, that trip almost saved you, didn't it? It did save me. Yeah. I mean, uh, you get to hang out with your best friend. You get yeah. to eat stuff you've never eaten. You get to paint, and and really, starting that probably, I'm I'm sure a big part of your thoughts on that were you knew that my favorite work Sergeant. came from uh, Sergeant's yeah, Sergeant. Italian paintings. Getting to paint where your favorite painter painted, uh, you the know, white's all different those over things. There, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, and and it, and I did 128 paintings in 70 days, which was a personal best wow. for me. Yeah. Can I mention? I don't want to interrupt. He's on steroids. I, he's, he's selling himself <laughs> short because 70 days, like seven of those were travel days. So it's really he did 127 in 63 days. It was, it was great. I've 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 never had that. You know, it's it. It was great to be in Italy, but it was really wonderful also to be hanging out with you and. And to be able to work unencumbered uh, yeah. by flat tires or jammed printers or meeting with a client about something, you know, you could just paint for 70 days. Never had that that uh, availability. You before. came back almost a different person. I mean, I could see yeah. you were just rejuvenated. His work changed over there, too. Would you agree oh, with yeah, that? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely you... changed. He got, you know, you get over there and you got, got these places that, have, you know, are 700 years old. and. The patina uh, of uh, the neutral colors, the mm -hmm. subtle, cha subtle varieties of neutrals, uh, that changed my work. I think detail, too. You seemed yeah. like you picked up more detail than you used to. Yeah, I did most paintings about that size. And so given the time limitations of each uh, painting, you had to kind of figure out what the important things were right. to say. So you couldn't say everything, so you, you, you more or less edit yourself down to the big shapes. It and I learned a, a lot about painting there. You made yourself a more efficient observer, I guess that would be. Yeah, when you when you paint, yeah. you can kind of grow like for seven days, and then you got to take a break. And then when you start again, you kind of got to relearn at the beginning of that next phase. Well, this is the longest phase I've had, unbroken. But uh, it was it was a joyous thing, and I was really proud to work on that book. Uh, I kind of saw that as my job over there is really to... It's a big job with me, to, though. <laughs> To get why where he needed to be. I mean, we were there as it started out as just it was going to be this trip. Yeah. Started as a year long trip, then six months with my wife, and at the time my 14 year old daughter, my 10 year old son, and and I was opening an Italian restaurant in Hattiesburg at the time, and I would come up here to Jackson, really a few blocks from where we are, and mm -hmm. our our mutual friend David Trigiani, who's a dual citizen Italian and a great Italian cook. And, and I was learning these recipes his mother taught him. So I would come up on Wednesdays, cook in his kitchen, all this home, home cooked Italian, as I was planning this long trip and as I was about to open this Italian restaurant. And we'd fix this food and then I'd call Wyatt, hey man, come on over to David's, we're gonna eat it's food. Pasta Trigiani. Yeah, Pasta Trigiani I started that there. Dish. And we were eating lunch one day, we are eating all this food uh, we had cooked and I said, you know, I'm in the middle of, of planning this thing. Uh, you know, we're going to be in Italy for 10 weeks. You know, why Why don't you just fly over and, and maybe I'm our like, next book will be an Italian book. I said, yes, he said, yes. You know, so, That's a great okay. job, you know. Yeah. But, so uh, that's yeah. that's kind of how it happened. We had... Uh, and now you're doing trips. That's what's so cool. Well, you know, uh, on that trip, we flew into Sweden with my wife and kids. We bought a Volvo, and about two weeks later, we're in Istanbul, Turkey. And we just drove around. I had it all planned. And, and we're coming up uh, the Adriatic, actually, and we're near Croatia and all that. And Wyatt flew into Venice. And Wyatt was 10 days in Venice before we got to him mm -hmm. and had already finished 20-something paintings. <laughs> And, and over the beautiful. next yeah. 10 weeks, I mean, we covered from the southernmost tip of Sicily to the Alps. And that book that came out, it's called An Italian Palette, and, and that's what happened that you're yeah. talking about. We were on the book tour mm -hmm. for that book, and people kept saying, man, we'd love to go to Italy. Why don't you take us to Italy? Take... And you kind of think that's, a, you know, that's just what people say right. as conversation while you're signing their book. And they kept asking, and finally I called Wyatt up one day and said, man, these people want to go to Italy. You want to take them to Italy? And... We made a Facebook post and we, we filled up like that day and it, there was a waiting list so we said, well, let's go in the spring. And we filled up that one and we said, well, let's just stay over there and fly another group in and it's just kind of become this thing. It's, 
We enjoy it, though. It's so a beautiful place. Why paints, yeah. and I take people, and we cook, and you got food and friends, and you got the yeah. five Fs. And it that's really it. is a country about food and art. I mean, mm -hmm. that's a couple of the really thousands big of years of food and art. So, what's next for y'all? Go for it. Well, we're working on the palette to palette. We have a series that we're probably going to be working on beyond this. I mean, yeah. I like working with Robert. We have a good time doing this, so we. Uh, there's a, we could do a Northern Italy book, I guess. We could be doing a, we could do a New Orleans. Uh, yeah, I think we're talking about doing a New Orleans book yeah. next. And uh, I've been down there a lot lately. And uh, you know, the food, the food's right in my wheelhouse. That's food and, and art uh, down there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you've got it's the most European city in America. And uh, Wyatt loves to paint down there. And uh, so I think we're. You know, this the book we're on now will is, will come out and we'll do the, you know the tour and the stuff around that and the TV show, the TV show will run uh, six episodes this fall and then they're the Italian because we, when we went in the spring we we took Anthony Thaxton who I was telling you about and TV crew, and we filmed so there are eight episodes uh, that are going to come from Tuscany. Nice, it's really cool. Nice. And um, one yeah. two instances where I almost get run over. Uh, totally. Wyatt almost died <laughs> twice. It's, you don't hear that about artists, man. It's not like a dangerous <laughs> profession or whatever. But it was a career move. Stay yeah, tuned yeah. and see Wyatt Waters <laughs> almost die on Palette to Palette. Well, this has been a pleasure. I mean, we haven't been able to work together in a while, but mm -hmm. it has been an honor to be able to sit down with y'all and be able to catch up. with you. Hey. Oh, very good. Fun stuff. Thanks for having me. It is. I look forward to the show, too. So right here on MPP. That's it. Thanks, right. Marshall. Very good.